To brighten up the program a little bit, Marnie, let me tell you a little secret. I was on a panel last night. You didn't see me on the panel except a little bit after 8 o'clock with some distinguished gentleman from the East. There was Dalton Camp, who seemed to be holding back for some reason. He's not looking for a job. I don't know why he held back. Tommy Douglas, who, of course, I, for whom I have a great admiration. A uh, guy called Crispo, an economist, very good indeed. And Don Jimison, the professional liberal, the guy who was bouncing the election and then bouncing Newfoundland. Don't know what job he's got yet. Can't remember. Anyway, I was sticking in the knife from time to time to try and waken up this panel. One of the knives I stuck in very early on in the afternoon, Vancouver time, was that three new leaders for the next election. We know Trudeau's going. Dollars to Donuts, Clark will go because the Tories devour not only the young, but they're old and they're young and they're middle-aged. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Broadbent, a long-suffering, patient man who didn't really want the job this time, gone as far as he can go. 32 seats, very creditable. He can retire or be changed for Bob Ray with some dignity. Anyway, I want you to see this exchange. I forget precisely how it starts. They're calling me in from the east. You think I was 30,000 miles away in Tokyo, but I'm actually still in a part of Canada called British Columbia. And just watch this little exchange. I hope the Conservative Party has learned some lessons from the past. I think the caucus stuck with one leader too long, even Baker. And then the next caucus didn't stick with Stanfield long enough. Here, here. And it's up to this caucus to learn the wisdom of that. The, the other thing you have to say is because of my, my last contribution to the Conservative Party, which was leadership review, nobody has to, to busy themselves with that consideration until the next annual meeting. They're talking about and the caucus future. the party will accept the judgment and wisdom of the caucus in that decision. And if Clark wants to stay and, the, and he has enough support in the caucus, He's I, good for a number of years. I think we've given Jack Webster enough ammunition Mon to bring him back in. Come on in, Jack. <laughs> I'm Come on in firing, Jack. I'm beginning to realize that I truly am 3,000 miles away. When I hear Dalton talking about the caucus, if they wish to support, Clark will have the wisdom to support them. Dalton was the guy whom, if my memory serves me correctly, invented the term wimp. Now, it was the wimp in the shadow. I call, I call on everybody here, the all these journalists here, to deny that. Dalton, oh boy. <laughs> I cannot see how you can seriously say that Mr. Clark, who muffed the, the defeat in the House of Commons, no doubt about that, and that Mr. Clark, who has been slashed down to nothing, can face his caucus and expect to go on for another four years. What Don Jimison might tell us now, if I can inject what might be a note of levity into it, I think Justin's about eight, and maybe in the 1990 election, Justin could run and we could start a dynasty. <laughs> Jack, I, I can answer that for you. Western Canada. And let, let me answer that for you by saying that we how many times we were not by, if I may forgive, you may forgive my expression again, the Eastern Media Mafia. Did you have time to vote yesterday? Did I ever? If you are, if you are like me, underneath <laughs> this, partisan spirit that you are just showing and which I sometimes showed too. I think if you are like me, you probably have a grudging admiration for Mr. Clark. He has shown... <laughs> he has shown... He has shown immense dedication to his country. He has proved in this campaign that he is a man of great stamina. But more important, he has shown courage in face of adversity. And I want to say tonight, I want to say tonight, that I want to say tonight very seriously that such warriors should not be counted out of the history of this parliament or indeed of the history of Canada.